Hi, Cardinals. So I decided that maybe you guys would like to hear the rest of the Losers Club. So I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to start with Chapter 20, Rebranding. And this will be for the sixth grade class, Mrs. Harstein and Mrs. Zellis' class. Okay, um, let me give you a little recap because we've been gone for a while. Um, Alec just got home from almost having a fight with Kent over at Nina's house. So if you remember that, that's where we are. By 9 o'clock that same Friday night, Alec admitted to himself that he wished Nina would care more about him and less about Kent. But the fact was, if Nina chose to hang around with Kent, there wasn't much he could do about it. So he did what he'd always done whenever a problem pushed in at him. He went looking for his comfort books. And much later, when he finally fell asleep, Alec was shipwrecked on an island with the Swiss family Robinson. He woke up around 7 on Saturday morning, which was way, way too early. He tried getting back to sleep, but all his thoughts from the night before came crashing in. Plus, Luke was already awake. He heard, he heard soft computer game explosions through the wall. Then he smelled coffee, so he pulled on his jeans and a t-shirt and headed downstairs. He found his dad out back on the sun porch reading the news on his iPad. He smiled at Alec. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't get back to sleep. Your light was on at midnight, and you were drooling all over your book. Alec smiled. Thanks for saving my place, and for shutting off the light. His dad looked at him. You couldn't stay awake last night, and you couldn't stay awake this morning. You couldn't stay asleep this morning, sorry. What's up? I know the schoolwork is going great. Those Friday reports, really excellent. Thanks, Alex said. Yeah, school's good. It's after school, the reading club and everything. His dad closed the cover of the iPad, but didn't say anything. Just waited. Alex said, so, when you were a kid, did you ever get bullied? You mean, did kids punch me and stuff me into my locker and hold me upside down in the boys' room with my head stuck inside a flushing toilet? Ah, Alex's eyes got huge. That happened to you? His dad smiled. Nope, never. I was always a computer geek, but I was never small enough for anybody to try stuff like that. But I still got called a nerd by just about everybody. And... Teasing like that, it's still bullying. He took a sip of coffee and then said, Are you getting bullied after school? Alex shook his head. Nah, it's, it's more like what you said, teased. Except they call me a bookworm. His dad frowned. Let me guess. Kent Blair, right? His, yep, Kent again. Except I am a bookworm. I just am. Well, his dad said, I'm a genuine nerd. I always have been, and I always will be. You have to learn not to care about the words. Alex said, yeah, except nerds and geeks are cool now. They can end up being billionaires. I don't know what bookworms turn into, but they don't turn into billionaires. His dad said, trust me, most nerds don't become billionaires. And it's not about money anyway. It's about doing what you're good at, doing what you love. You still love books, right? Still love reading? Sure. Then don't let stupid labels bother you. Keep doing what you love, except not during classes. <laughs> Alec nodded. Right. Then he was quiet a moment. It's just, well, girls don't like guys that are bookworms much. They mostly like sports guys. Oh, said his dad slowly. Girls. Well, maybe this isn't going to sound like much help, but girls are really smart. And they're just like everybody else because they think they like one thing for a while and then they think some more and they figure out that maybe they don't like that so much. And everybody figures out that labels don't matter either, like bookworm or sports guy, because that's a label too. And eventually everyone figures out that it's not what someone does that matters most. It's what a person is on the inside. His dad made a face. Yikes, that sounded like something from one of those morning talk shows. I need more coffee, or maybe I need less coffee. Alex smiled a little, but then he shook his head. I, I get what you mean, but girls don't like bookworms, period. So, his dad said, maybe you should stop being a bookworm. Be something else. Right, Alex said, like that could ever happen. And besides, his dad said, you're kind of a sports guy yourself. I don't know any other 12-year-old kid who can water ski the way you do. His dad had a point, sort of. 
Alec had first learned to water ski the summer after second grade, when he was barely eight years old. His grandparents had a cottage on a lake in New Hampshire, and their neighbors had a son Alec's age named Paul. They also had a powerful ski boat. Paul's family skied every afternoon when it wasn't raining, and Alec always got to tag along. It turned out that Alec was a natural on skis. He had a great sense of balance, he was strong and agile, and most importantly, he wasn't afraid to fall. Paul's older brother, Liam, was an expert at slalom skiing, and after Alec's very first time skiing, that became his goal. He wanted to go cutting back and forth across the wake on a single ski like Liam did, blasting out big plumes of spray with each sharp turn. With good coaching from Liam, by the end of his second summer as a skier, Alec was able to get up and stay up on one ski. And this past summer, before sixth grade, he'd really started feeling like he had full control out there. He was even able to use the wake of the motorboat like a ramp and launch himself a few feet into the air as he zipped back and forth. There were always three or four other people in the boat, but they were at the far end of the tow rope. Alec felt like he was totally alone out there, slicing the surface of the lake. He still fell, but not very often. And that feeling of speed and freedom and self-control was like nothing else. The skiing made him strong, too. A ten-minute slalom ride was like an hour and a half of heavy exercise. Read all morning, water ski all afternoon, read all night. That three weeks in New Hampshire was Alec's idea of the perfect summer vacation. But being great at a slalom ski, it wasn't the same as being good at baseball or basketball or soccer. Or even kickball. Water skiing was something he did mostly by himself, sort of like reading. And no matter how good he was at it, it didn't count. Not at school. And not with girls. His dad saw that Alec wasn't really buying either idea, that he could decide to be something else, or that he could be a sports guy himself. Okay, he said. Here's a true story. About ten years ago, I worked for this company that made computer hard drives. Kind of clunky, but they were super reliable, and the company sold hundreds of thousands of them. Then we got a bad batch of parts, and we didn't know it until a bad part got built into about 50,000 of our drives, and they got shipped out all over the world. And the drives started failing, and people lost their data, and all of a sudden, our reputation was dead. We fixed the problem fast, made the same terrific drives as before, but no one would buy anything with our name on it. Our brand was ruined. So what happened? Alec asked. Well, it pretty much killed the company but only for about six months. First of all, we fixed our quality control to make sure bad parts never slip past again. Then, we changed our design of our cases and we made plans to offer good deals that would get customers buying again. And, we changed the name on our company, our brand name. We rebranded ourselves, made a new logo too. Alec had a puzzled look on his face. But you said maybe I should stop being a bookworm. Yeah, but what I meant is, Keep being who you are, keep doing what you do, but rebrand yourself. What you do and what you are, call it something else. Okay, Alex said slowly. But, like, what? His dad shrugged. I don't know, but bookworm is just a word, right? Bookworm, sports guy, airhead, brainiac, all those labels, they're just words. Bookworm calls up a picture in the mind, and you don't like it. So, pick another word. A word that calls up a different picture. Something that's more like what you are really like. Alec said, What was your company's old name? Eastern Data. And the new name? His dad opened the iPad cover, tapped on the screen, and then turned it toward Alec. Here, he said, the new name and logo go together. Alec read the name out loud. Blockhouse Digital. That's way better than Eastern Data. And that picture? There's a blockhouse like that in Treasure Island. He thought a moment and then said, so the computer drives were still the same? Yep, said his dad. On the inside, they were exactly the same. Except rebranding is tricky. You have to get the timing right. But a new name and a good logo at the right time, it can be a help. Anyway, it's just something to think about. And the girls thing, like I said, girls are smart. If you keep on being one of the good guys, girls are going to figure that out no matter what. All that sounded good to Alec, and most of it even made sense. But still, he didn't feel much better. And after he ate some breakfast, he went back to the Swiss family Robinson, back to living in a treehouse on a distant island. Okay, that's it for this chapter. We'll continue with the next video. Thank you, guys.